Hi friends, welcome to lecture 83 in our helicopter dynamics course. And uh, today we are going to discuss about stability analysis part of the ground resonance problem. So in the previous lecture, we developed the equations for the four degree of freedom system, which essentially constituted zeta 1c, zeta 1x, xh and yh. So these were the four degrees of freedom. And now we are going to move forward with getting the stability of this differential equation system. I'm Dr. Anjan Ganguly. Now, if we take that differential equation, put it in first order form, and then look at its stability. So remember, it's a constant coefficient system. So we can put e to the power st, and then we can expand that out. So essentially, we get this determinant here and this determinant is essentially set to zero now after doing that we get a polynomial which is an eighth degree polynomial in s and we have to essentially solve for this s and the roots of this particular polynomial are going to tell us whether the system is stable or not so some of the things to clearly see here is that you have the terms such as C subscript zeta, which represent the damping for the lag motion for the lag mode. You also have some of the terms which involve S zeta star, which are essentially the coupling terms. So coupling terms are all coming from S zeta star here. You can see that. And then of course you have the support motion in these two equations and these two equations essentially represent the lag motion so the solution of this equation would give us eight eigenvalues for the problem and typically they are going to be four complex pairs now ground resonance is the dynamic instability which would happen if one of these modes becomes unstable so that's the situation where this system essentially tells you where ground resonance is taking place now we are going to consider some aspects to give us a physical understanding of ground resonance. Of course, mathematically, the system I discussed previously, if you simply look at the stability of that system, calculate the eigenvalues, the characteristic polynomial, you are going to know whether the system is stable or not. But let's look at some particular cases. Let's start looking at the equation here, S zeta star is zero. Now, if S zeta star is zero, then we get this as the solution. So this is essentially the uncoupled dynamics of the system. So it would totally be dependent on the damping in the lag mode, the frequency in the lag mode. So these are corresponding to the rotating frame. Now, if we look to the fixed frame, there is going to be a transformation in the eigenvalue so essentially we are going to get two of them we are going to get a high frequency mode and the low frequency mode so essentially s is going to be sr plus minus i in the non-rotating frame there are two types of modes now if you look at the high frequency mode that's going to be sr plus i and the low frequency mode is going to be sr minus i so when you have the high frequency mode the frequency is going to be the imaginary part of the sr plus one per rev and this is of course greater than the rotational speed you can see here because rotational speed is one per rev and this corresponds to a progressive whirling motion of the rotor cg so we have encountered some of this before also the other side we get the low frequency mode and this is corresponding to s is sr minus i now here the frequency is going to be imaginary sr minus one per rev now there are two possibilities here. You can have a stiff lag rotor where imaginary part of SR is greater than one. This is of course very rare, but if you have this, it's going to result in a regressive whirling motion of the rotor CG at a frequency of im SR minus one per rev. Now for the soft lag rotor, the imaginary SR is less than one, and this is going to be much more popular situation so this is going to result in a progressive 
whirling motion of the rotor CG at a frequency of 1 minus m SR per rev. So again, we can calculate these provided we know the value of SR. Now let's look at the uncoupled support eigenvalues. So here you have these two here. Remember CX and CY corresponding to damping in the body system. And again, omega X and omega Y are corresponding to the frequencies in the body system. So these are two complex conjugate pairs in the fixed reference frame which we are getting for the body motion or the support motion. Now, one can see that both the uncoupled and support motion is stable and the ground resonance instability only occurs due to the inertial coupling term S zeta star. But in reality, this S zeta star is always going to be present. The cases we considered before are theoretically there to just tell you that if there was no coupling, then the stability problem or the instability problem would not be there. Now, for zero damping and zero inertial coupling, there would be four frequencies, uh, high frequency lag, nu zeta plus one, low frequency lag, nu zeta minus one. Remember, nu zeta is the rotating frequency of the lag motion. And longitudinal frequency would be omega x and lateral support frequency would be omega y. So these would be essentially the four frequencies if we had zero damping and zero inertial coupling. But generally we have both these present or normally we have both these present. So due to coupling terms, the modes coalesce resulting in the instability we know as ground resonance. So what would happen if we were to make a plot of frequency versus rotation speed and we didn't have any coupling, so that's the dotted line case as zeta star is zero, then we would have all these dotted lines. We would have a lag, one lag, two. We would have support motion, support motion frequencies here. And these would all be nice straight lines and there would be no modal coalescence. But because of the presence of S zeta star term, you get essentially the coalescence between the modes. So you can see here, this mode goes like this, this mode, uh, goes like this and so on. So essentially, these modes which are shown in the dark lines here, these are the four modes which are resulting because of the presence of S zeta star and there is a modal coalescence taking place. So essentially, physically, we can say that the coalescence of rotor and body modes leads to ground resonance. Now, mathematically, this would come out from your model from the four degree of freedom model. So the four degree of freedom model gives us the 8 by 8 matrix and the determinant of that matrix needs to be set to 0 to investigate its stability. So any of you who are familiar with the theory of stability of any system, for example, x dot is Ax, you know that the eigenvalues of A tell you a lot about the stability of the system. So this generally is a phenomena which mathematically can be explored. If you have a more complex phenomena, you may have an air resonance phenomena or any other stability phenomena. You essentially need to put those phenomena in terms of a certain mathematical model and write them as an equation system x dot is ax. And once you have done that, if a is constant coefficient, then you find the eigenvalues of a. And again, the eigenvalues of a tell you whether the system is stable or not. So essentially, if you encounter any zero damping situation, you have an instability. So I will stop this lecture here and I will see you in my next video.